Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, the ear rape. My uh, volume was turned so... down this time, though. Not, so, not always... this time. <laughs> Every time we do one of these parts, I'm like, wow, this game is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> It I'm is just fucking amazed. It's a very nice game. Huh. Oh, the water effects just... on the screen. Mm. So much detail. The water. What am I doing? <laughs> You're basking in the water. You're giving Samus a bath. That's inappropriate. <laughs> Not on the internet. Oh shit, the mushrooms are going to explode. Actually, I was watching uh, one of the, the the Japanese version of uh, Power Rangers SPD. And uh, mm -hmm. the Pink Ranger, her entire gimmick is she loves taking baths, baths. I only watched like episode one, but she takes a bath in it like three different times. So it's not as inappropriate as you would think. Ah. <laughs> uh, we're on a damn mission here. Stop thinking about people taking baths. All right. Uh, just, hey, you know that suit. I don't know how the uh, I don't know how the how comfortable it is in there. You know, and especially with the zero suit and everything. Like, it's like space technology. I'm sure it's just it's perfectly comfortable. Hey, you never know. We have five thousand years of existence and we still uh haven't come up with good solutions for all of this just saying it's not guaranteed that you know like 200 years later they'd have it or how whatever year this takes place in but this could take place at any time we don't fucking know <laughs> exactly and we also don't know what their technology is so therefore in my head canon she still needs a bath the Cho, but we know the Chozo are like far and away the most advanced. Nintendo, give us a bath scene. Species. Oh my god. <laughs> With Ridley. Ridley and no one else. Hey, someone's into it. Ridley's bathing crate, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Anti artist, get on that one. He's rubbing his big old belly. <laughs> uh, tag it with hashtag crazy jelly comms. Uh, no. Or, no one's or going just to do Jelly that. Lord. <laughs> yes, because I'm the only person on this channel. Hey, you're the one who came up with this magnificent idea. Uh, all credit to it's you, true. bud. <laughs> it is true. You're the one, though, that was like, hey, we're actually doing this. Fuck you. <laughs> I never said so, we're doing it. Uh, someone else is yeah, doing it. Duh. That's the beauty of the internet. I don't have to do anything. Everyone else does it for me. See, but no, you you were like, I was like not even thinking we were actually going to do the channel. But then at one point over the summer, I think it was of uh, 2022, I think. Yeah, you were like, hey, uh, so I'm recording stuff for this channel we want to do. And I'm like, oh, you're doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Halo. Oh, shit. We can do Halo. Let's do Halo. <laughs> oh, by the way, I recorded I'm Halo 2, so we still need Halo 1, but I don't like Halo 1. And what did we start <laughs> with? We started with Sonic 1. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm doing this part, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> We're gonna be here a while. I, th I so you you guys will notice this is an extended part. Uh, yeah, because he hates that us. That is because that is because it sort of happened this way. Um, barring part nine, which will be the last part. Um, part three and that. part part three and part six are like for some reason the parts I was like, you know what? I have a bunch of items. I'm gonna try and go and get some some extra like energy tanks and missiles and stuff so i'm sure we'll do something important in this part but <laughs> filler <laughs> see that's like the question i have to ask right now is why are we watching this <laughs> because it's part of the game <sighs> 
Yeah, you were you were you know, on part one. You spoke too soon and were like, "Oh, I uh, I'm glad you're not getting a hundred percent because we'd be here forever." Well, I get close to a hundred percent. No, <laughs> you know, I was playing near earlier. I'm gonna go back to mm -hmm. that now. <laughs> I have no particular game I want to play right now, which is weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do need to play more near. I gotta finish recording it. I gotta finish my Elden Ring playthrough, but I'm at the point where I'm just like, I waited too long <laughs> when I took that break from it, and now I'm like disenfranchised or not disenfranchised. Fucking, uh, I'm like, what are you disenfranchised not... from there, bud? Uh, <laughs> we got uh, we got something we want to talk about there? <laughs> no, don't worry about it. But. <laughs> I uh, I feel like I'm just not into it. Like I'm not like I was when I started the game. You know. Uh, yeah, that's what happened to me. So, I don't know. I feel like I should just uh, rush through the rest of the game because my buddies want to do a uh, mo modded co-op playthrough of it. <laughs> <laughs> Are they modding in the mechs from Armored Core? Because people have already done that. Um. No, but that would be hilarious because I I have seen people just rolling around as tanks with the mods. Looks pretty funny. I need the spider ball. We nope. Fuck. <laughs> no, it's, oh, just you can't imagine go in going here against either. one of the dragons in that game with a giant ass mech. Yeah. And that's the plot of a Call of Duty Zombies map. Fuck. Damn it. Just swim through it. Just you grin can't and bear jump it. out of it, though. <laughs> Just grin and bear it. <laughs> I uh, yeah, yeah. wish Metroid games would play a little more with having uh, hot and cold rooms that you could try and speed your way through, because Dread and Fusion do it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But not enough, I feel. I feel like you can add in a lot of extra goodies that way for skill-based players, but still make it pretty easy for... Uh, non-skill based players to get it later just speed up exploration you know so you don't have to do it in the end game hunt yeah. a, game yeah. for, a game like fusion that would greatly help him so you're not collecting like 30 power bombs at the end of the game hey um fucking samus returns has a lot of hot rooms <laughs> it, uh, i don't know how many of those you can like approach early Oh, I don't. And dreads. I don't know. I, dreads only like a couple here and there. Uh, well, there's the a lot of I. Rooms. I know there's a few of them that you can. There's at least a few of them that you can go to early because I remember going into a hot room before I had the uh, various suit or whatever, and uh, like immediately walking straight back out because I heard the fucking Magmore Caverns <laughs> music. Rid Ridley's Lair theme. It's not Magmore Caverns. Yeah, it's ma it's the mag it's the it's straight up the song from this game, so I call it Magmore Caverns. No, it's Ridley's Lair. It's not even a remix of the Prime song. And this Prime uses it in Magmore Caverns, so fuck you can't go here either. What power ups that for? I don't think I ever got to those. There's a that's one of the Chozo artifacts. Oh, it's back up in Flagra's layer. Oh, yeah, I didn't make but it. No, to that I point. need. <laughs> I got to I the base on mines and gave and gave up. I need the stupid fire bitch. Uh, we just to date this. I think it's rumored next week there's going to be a Nintendo Direct. Oh. I think someone. Yeah. I think someone was saying something about a shadow trap, and I wonder if that could be uh, Prime Two and Prime Three, since um, those are probably getting less involved remasters. Yeah. Um. So just so you guys know, this video will be released after this rumored direct. <laughs> so if we're, we're really wrong, we're wrong. This. Or if if we're right then hell yeah tell us how right we were in the comments <laughs> but um yeah so the next game from yoko taro will be revealed at that event thank me later <laughs> i'm just hoping that penny's big breakaway gets a release date or something 
You know, because Penny's big bre- big breakaway has been at like every Nintendo Direct mm. for the last year. I know so. I have almost no hype for that. I'm just kind of sitting here and being like, when it releases, I'll play it. But I'm not really losing any sleep till I get it. I'm losing sleep. It <laughs> looks good. It looks real good. I want it. I want it real bad. Want it in my bones. Yeah. Something completely but, different. Um, I kind of want to check out. Uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, Grand Blue Fantasy uh, Relink at all. It's like no. a action RPG. I think that just came out. I'm gonna have to check that one out. Once I'm done with some other RPGs, but it's been getting a lot mm. of good reviews. Uh, um, I'm, I, you're not the person to talk about with JRPGs, but we need something to talk no. about. No. Go well, play a JRPG. Else, uh, go God play a GR, JRPGs already. Persona 3 no. just came out. Go play that. Why would I? Why? You already know what I'm going to do with JRPGs. You, you haven't done it yet. Maybe I don't want to. Do you ever think about that? I you ever think about that? Don't give you a shit. Do you ever think about what I want? I don't give a shit. <laughs> That's the relationship of this channel. You do what I say. And that's it. I'm looking for something. I don't know what it is. Uh, I apologize for this part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you gotten anything? Like a single item? I have item? not done anything in this. I'm convinced that the only reason you didn't cut all, any of this stuff is because you wanted to use the re-entry from a save point as the starting transition. It's probably that, and uh, also I probably just wasn't paying attention, to be honest with you, when I was editing this. This was like the playthrough, because I thought we were going to get to this much sooner, so I kind of rushed to this playthrough. That was three <laughs> Sonic games uh, ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I thought we were... Oh, I'm getting something! Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah! It only took 12 minutes! <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I am oh going to keep God. all of this in mind when I edit together near. Uh, this will not happen good God, on future... I'm not sitting through hours of nothing in that game. Or we're going to be real bored, even worse than this. <laughs> I will not do that. I will not... The future Metroid games will be much better edited. This one, I definitely just kind of rushed through. My bad. Because <laughs> it was like, it was the new game, and I was recording it as it came out. And I was like, I wanted it all ready in case we got to it really fast. But no, we didn't end up doing that. I feel like you so. saying there will be long periods of nothing is like me saying there will be no uh, jump cuts in Dark Souls 2. Oh, God. <laughs> you should do that. That would be fun. We wouldn't have to die of alcohol poisoning. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm back here. Oh, well, at least we're a long, long way out from Dark Souls 2. It can't hurt us yet. Yes, this is where I want to go. Oh, finally. This is what I want to do. And you see, this is why... This children is why I check the map every two seconds in Doom. <laughs> Oh my <laughs> I was trying to be cool. <laughs> it's okay. I'd have done the same thing if I weren't recording. <laughs> I just play these games like I normally do when I am recording. So, oh yeah, it's this room. This is the room where I got fucking like majorly stuck with the fucking uh, the the morph ball bomb jump. Because in the original, you have to use it for this puzzle. Oh, um, you. Do you oh. not have the spring ball in the original? No, the original you have the the morph ball bombs and nothing but that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that oh, makes it much easier. Right. That looks in a wink. Yeah, uh, morph have to ball bombs like... should not be a required ability. Or bomb jumping Morphle, should not be a yeah, required bomb ability. Jumping, yeah, bomb uh, jumping, yeah. Um, just like wall jumping. This is the only part in the game where they make you do it as well, and that makes it doubly worse. Oh, I guess it's just for an expansion, never mind. Because that'd be like saying advanced shine sparking puzzles shouldn't be there. 
And I guess for an expansion, for just True. a missile expansion and, and items, I True. guess that's fine. True, but I, I feel like they should have done more with it rather than just the one puzzle. That yeah, I, I think Tread. So like, think Tread has like three or four good, really good Shine Spark puzzles. Uh, I don't. Also has, I don't know mu as also... much about Fusion or Super Metroid. Or is it a mission? Oh, in that fuck regard? yes. <laughs> oh, hey, look, it all comes around. Look at that. You guys remember that from 10 minutes ago? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> it was on purpose. <laughs> of course. We sat here for 12 minutes and nothing for all, all for this. <laughs> hey, listen, it's part three, and I'm already almost halfway done with the logbook. I think I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> That's okay, you always miss the scan, so you're never gonna 100% it. Yeah. I'll always miss at least one thing. Yep. For the rest of time. Where is it? Uh, fuck if I know. I'll never fucking know. Wait, no, why am I... Where am I going? Oh gosh. I'm losing my mind. Okay. Leave this place forever. Never come back. <laughs> Except we have to come back for an expansion later. Yup. You know what? I should. I really should have just like watched a 100% guide or something so I could <laughs> know what to do at all times. But uh, it's probably what I'll do yeah. whenever I get to fusion. Yeah. It's like run through it with a trying to get in a trying to get 100% or as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And then actually play it. Of course, I say that I'll do a practice run for a lot of games, and I have yet to do one. Ah, uh, so <laughs> what's trial and error? Ow. Unless you count Sonic Superstars, because I did record that one immediately after my first playthrough. Other than Trip's st story, uh, that was all my first try. Uh, you should that have was just awful. done your first playthrough. Would have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to look good. It was the new 2D Sonic game, and now I hate 2D it wasn't Sonic. Gonna, it wasn't going to look that much differently because you would always cut to your successful run after a death, you know? Ah, I didn't really have to do that too often. Uh, there were a couple points I know, but not, not too bad, other than bosses, because... Uh, once again, fuck the bosses of that game. But we're not going to talk yeah. about that. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Metroid Prime Remastered. Very Great happy. Game. Uh, I'll probably never finish it. <laughs> Why not? You're, aren't you going to be recording Prime 2 for the channel? <laughs> I don't remember saying that, but... Hey, maybe I I'll like that so much were. better. You haven't even finished this. So how do you even know just because I haven't finished this doesn't mean I won't jump into two. Well, that's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I am really. I went into I Persona are... three without Persona one and two. I hope you are right. By the way, that they're gonna dr shadow drop like the Switch versions of Prime two and three because that's what I've been like holding out for. But I'm also kind of expecting Prime four to be a launch game. Yeah for the switch Two this year so i need i need them to release those switch ports as soon as possible if the switch Two happens they, this year yeah it probably will like stop making yeah, predictions I'm, we're always wrong yeah okay buddy except for the shadow thing i was right about that i'll take that <laughs> i i'm fine making predictions and i think the switch that 2 big is music this back week. Uh, uh, ah, shit. <laughs> Dude, that happened to me every single time. <laughs> the, the, the fire just yeets you to the ground. Like Fire is not supposed to have that much force against you. <laughs> it shouldn't have any force against you. <laughs> well, those are some powerful ass events. Yeah. Fuck this guy. Also, good on the Chozo for uh, using renewable energy sources. And environmental not... friendly stuff. They have also, on all these planets, equipped all the life forms with uh, the ability to respawn. <laughs> well, you know, I never said everything was good. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> just, just. Okay. We're not going uh, in the Morphal Tunnel. We're good. Nope. Platform 
platform. Yay. Challenging game. <laughs> I still love the design of this area. It just looks so clean. Yeah. Very, love, very nice like, idea. I love the areas that, like, the Chozo, or not the Chozo, the Space Pirates have, like, uh, taken a, like, hold of, or, like, they were, you know, this is, like, their base of operations, so, yeah. like, in the surrounding areas, they built, like, some tunnels to make traversal easier and stuff like that. It's it's a very nice attention to detail. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the the Metroid games are like the kings of attention to detail. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, this is a nice equivalent to something like uh, all the labs on uh, Dread. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of the heavily dilapidated and overgrown stuff of Zero Mission. Yeah. And then return Super Metroid. Though I don't think Zebus as well immediately looks like a planet that was lived on by another race. Because it's pretty hard to tell in those games that what you're looking at is supposed to be what it is. Uh, I think yeah. at least. I never got as many details from that compared to Fusion and Dread, which I think are a lot more direct about it. Uh, yeah. I'm also just a big monkey brain about that stuff. So I'm terrible at noticing those details. Unless they're spoon fed them fed to me. Yeah. So I could just be wrong. It's time for maybe our first Chozo artifact. I might be able to get it now. Um I'm so hyped. I'm about <gasps> to jump out of my seat. And deck whoever's watching hey, this in the face. Listen. I tried my best to get these as I went, so we didn't have to do it later. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy XIII 2 actually has a quest like this at the end. Like, you, you're playing this fucking... You play 40 hours into this RPG, and you get to the end, and then you get hit with one of these quests that you can't do earlier. <laughs> uh, I that haven't actually sucks. played it myself, but it, it's you're not told where they are. You have to go around every single location of the game listening for, like, this chirp. So you know what room yeah. it's in. And then you have to look around for a heavily transparent floating orb. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I'll let you know when I actually do it how bad it really is. But, wow. That's, uh... I am not playing that game without a guide. <laughs> I need to go to Fintron Drifts. It's so pretty. We. I don't know if you saw, but when this game came out, I know there was a bit of criticism on Fintron Drifts. Uh, I think it was the snow effects weren't as heavy of a blizzard. And people were talking about mm -hmm. how it kind of ruins the atmosphere. I was like, it I kind of get really, it, but, like... It wasn't really like that in the original, though. It was really just, like, they had a stronger fog effect, I think. Mm. But that's it. Because, like, yeah, I don't... I don't remember the original having, like, a blizzard going on at all. Mm. Maybe I'm describing it wrong. Yeah, something about the particle effects just that apparently for some people didn't hit as well here. Uh, and mm -hmm. when that's your criticism, that's like the door is a pretty good to have as your only criticism. To me, the the biggest difference here is probably the lighting. Because, mm -hmm. like, there's actual dynamic looking lighting going on. Yeah. Um, versus the original, where that area kind of has more of a flat, like, moody kind of lighting, yeah. I would say. So. Either way, it's God. gorgeous. Okay, so why didn't we start from here? <laughs> um, because I got items. I don't care. I this isn't. Like I a... had to get the Chozo artifact. Eh. They should have just started at Magmor Caverns. <laughs> Horodite, shoot it. Shoot it. Cordite's the unbreakable stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Don't you have is. to hit it with, like, the wave beam? The wave beam, yeah, you're right. Get it, 
electricity. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> mm. Dude, I love how the Chozo statues look in this game. <laughs> yeah. They're so fucking cool. They're very, like, massive and imposing. Which makes sense, because, like, you don't necessarily think about it that much in the original games, but the Chozo statues were always a lot bigger than Samus yeah. was. It's just that in the original games, because they were 2D, uh, they more got in the way of how detailed they were compared to the rest of the environments yeah. and what you were looking at, especially in OG, OG Metroid. Yeah. So here, because the rest of the game is already pretty detailed... I think instead they've had more focused on the size and the menacing factor of it and the art style. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, great effect. Now, what the fuck were these Wait. statues for? Who the fuck knows? They're just sitting there waiting for, like, children or something to go grab the abilities there and be like, you are now a man. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. They they're clearly there as the, Well, they're not even like really statues. Some of them look metallic. Like like they're robots. <laughs> metallic? I mean, you can have metallic statues. Yeah, I know, but I'm I'm saying like some of them look like robotic, like they could be like they could move. Yeah. Maybe but... they're just uh unactivated Torizo statues, you know? Dude, that's something I wish the Prime games had, was a Torizo oh, that'd be statue cool. fight. And it it could basically act as like a, uh, like a rival battle, so that the, it could, like, play, look mm -hmm. like it has the same skills as Samus and stuff. Yeah. Obviously, this would be kind of a retroactive thing, but, like, imagine if they kind of went through and added in details that, like, showed the differences between Stuff built by the uh, peaceful scientific tribe and the Malkin. I can't remember their name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember the peaceful tribe either. <laughs> uh, the Malkin are cool, so I remember their names. Yeah. Hey, look at this thing. It's got like massive wings. Mm -hmm. Super, super cool. Uh,. I always love how much the music changes whenever you're around uh, shows or statues in any of the games. Yeah. It's just always a nice consistent detail that adds a bit of uh, that kind of reference to them. That no matter what game you're in or what time frame you're in, you always have this, uh, air, this nice atmosphere around them. Just because Samus has that connection and they're pretty much gone. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason. Because apparently Zebus getting wiped out means every Chozo on every other planet get wiped out, I guess? <laughs> They've never really done a proper explanation of what happened to him, I think. Yeah. It's kind of a weird detail. This is what it is. Uh, yeah, I was lost at this room, too. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying yeah, to remember something, what we have to do. There's something you gotta scan, but I thought it was one of these statue heads. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah... That is a problem I had with this game and Super Metroid is sometimes things just feel a little bit too obtuse for me. Mm hmm And we can't get it, but there's a uh, Chozo artifact right in the thing to our left. Well, I guess you don't have the right uh, ability. I need the the plasma beam to melt the ice on that ch statue so I can morph ball into his hands. Mm. Um. Yeah. Um. Bomb. No, I need to go down below. There we go. <sighs> then I gotta go back up. <laughs> this is definitely a Metroid game. <laughs> yes, it is. But I, I these like morph ball sections are so like funny because they're like clearly. Um, they are. And they then you get really stuck know. like this. <laughs> oh god damn it! <laughs> happened that's to me too. That's what happens when the yeah. That's what happens when the ball is more physics based. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, they they clearly with the morph ball they 
didn't necessarily how to make sections for it in a 3D space interesting, so they just kind of made them 2D, which is a little weird, but it makes sense enough, so it's whatever. Yeah, it just doesn't control the best. Alright, this boss fight's cool. Not yet. We gotta fight two of these little bitches first. I'm so scared. I'm here. You gonna die. I like how the these guys, like the enemies in this game, actually do predict your movement when they shoot, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Make some. Was it added in for the real? better controls? Because I imagine that must have been really hard to deal with on the GameCube. No, I think that was it. Was just like that in the original. Mm -hmm. You just had because you have the dodge move when you're locked on. Like oh yeah, this. that's true. So, so I guess it would have been the same. Yeah. Ow. Honestly, with the twin stick controls, there's probably a lot of people who play this without even using the lock on, if you're confident yeah. enough with aiming. You can you can definitely do and it. And just free up a bit of controls for you. You can definitely do that. Oh, also I just adding think... some more free flow to it. I don't think there's yeah. anything in this game though that really ever benefits from not locking on like that though. No, there's no like things you need to be pinpoint accurate with ever. So, um, I'm reading this guy so I can know how to fight him because I forgot when I did my playthrough. This that guy is, is kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, he's a big boy. I like this oh, boss, yeah. though. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, he looks insane with the, the updated graphics. Like, yeah. In the original, I couldn't really tell what his face was, to be honest, because the, the lighting was much dimmer, I think. But uh, now it's like, this is a real freaking creature. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also really cool. like the music for this track, or the, for this boss. There might be another one I was thinking of. I don't know, I'd have to check. This one, it sounds like the same theme that I was playing during Flagra. I think it's just like a standard boss theme. No, I think there was a specific boss theme. Is there another one in this area that you fight? Because uh, I'm pretty sure it's this? Yeah. Maybe, is you, there one you fight no. with like the x-ray vision? Or the yeah, x-ray scope? Fight, it's, it's the boulder guy that rolls around. Oh, uh, then it was probably um, that I'm thinking of as a really good yeah. uh, music track. Okay. Yeah, this one is it is just the same theme as the Flagra boss. This one, yeah, this bosses. But um, yeah. this one's pretty cool though. This one, it's kind of weird to fight him because, like, sometimes your missiles just don't hurt him. Yeah, I think don't you have to like wait till he does the frost attack? Yeah, I guess. When he's like breathing like that is when it hurts. But yeah. it also just doesn't seem like I'm doing a lot of damage. Like, the missiles just kind of touch him, and he doesn't react at all. But the, the the strategy here is to get up close so he does his breath attack. Um, I guess he can do oh, that, too. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Don't let him get too oh, close. Oh, my goodness. That dude took away two uh, energy tanks from you already. Damn. Yeah. This is some uh, fusion damage right here. Here he comes. Uh... In fusion, your energy tanks individually do not matter. Because every single attack does one energy tank of damage. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, you're not. <laughs> also, Dread oh, and uh, Samus Returns hard mode. Yeah, I haven't Ooh, actually that's some tried fucking bullshit. that. I haven't tried that mode. Because uh, I don't have the amiibo. <laughs> Oh, I haven't done fusion mode for uh, Samus Returns, but I did play on a hard mode. Does Do you know if the standard Smash Bros. Samus Amiibo works? Because I have that. As far as I can tell, it's only the Metroid Amiibo you can get. Mm. Which is, of course, now like $400. And it's so cool looking. <laughs> it is! It's such a clean looking Metroid. It's like, like one of Dude, the I would best love to have that next to the Dread Amiibos and shit in the Smash Amiibo. I I want all yeah. the Metroid Amiibos. Zero Suit Samus I think has one. Mm -hmm. I definitely want yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the Smash Bros Amiibo are not the highest quality ones, but that mm. Samus Returns one and the with for Samus and the Metroid are like the two of the best looking Amiibos by far. 
Like, oh, it's not even So close. far, my favorite have been the Dread ones, personally. Have you seen the Metroid or the Samus Returns one in person? No. Only on they, the internet. They are, like, bigger than usual. Mm. Because Samus is, like, in a crouched-down position, but she's the same height as the Dread amiibo. Okay. Um... And See, I just love the uh, detail on the Dread Amiibo and the anime yeah. and the poses like, they use for it. Mm -hmm, yeah, I, I, the Dread Amiibo look amazing too, but I think the Samus Returns one, it yeah. it looks like a miniature Samus is just crouching mm -hmm. on your table. Like, especially the so Emmy real. too. The Emmy looks so good. Mm -hmm. I wish, uh, well, then they would have to make an Amiibo for all the Emmy, but I kind of want a different Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> for the amiibo <laughs> yeah the know. white one dies really fast you don't really get any time with the you mainly with yeah. the covered ones it was mainly a trailer thing yeah but it's okay because mm -hmm. those trailers will forever live in my mind some call me johnny screaming metroid dread <laughs> yes that too <laughs> that's such a good clip <laughs> dude dude that i like it that reveal was so hype usually if like a game uh like releases or gets announced or something or m maybe not announced like it's in development but then it's put on hiatus for 14 plus years usually it never gets finished so the fact that they were just like yeah we're still just gonna make metroid dread that is mm -hmm. the game that is yeah. the next <laughs> step for metroid like that is such a cool thing mm-hmm Granted, a lot of the journey to get there, at least on the side of fans, was turned out to be a hoax, or some yeah. really, really poor happenstance, like the uh, Prime Three corruption uh, message about Dread. Just some really yeah. poor coincidences that didn't actually mean anything. But I really gotta wonder though what that message in Prime was, because it was like, I think it was it was either Prime Two or Prime Three. I think it was like project dread is in development or something like that um uh and I, was, I have to wonder what the the hell that was even there for like what i i either it had a meaning it may have just been flavor text i don't know i don't know I, maybe, maybe there was another for, prime game planned i don't know maybe there's a there was a plan yeah for a prime four and that never happened or something uh, and there was going to be something involving maybe a uh like just complete speculation here like a uh another uh genetically modified warrior named dread or some shit you know that'd be cool maybe mm -hmm. at some point during the develop and like really really early on the during the development of uh, other m there were links to dread i don't know probably not because oh. everything about the direction of other m is so far from anything that comes up with dread with the term dread so yeah just because other m is such a bizarre fucking game <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, like, ugh. i am very excited to talk about that eventually even though i haven't played it yet yeah it's like one of those games that like super excited to get to still haven't played it but i really want to get to it <laughs> now since it takes place before fusion other m does do we want to do it before fusion <laughs> no because it's a companion piece to fusion mm. you're supposed to have played fusion first it's very much that's how it's intended true because that'd be also, like playing... Um, if you think about it, we also did the latest game in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Like, Okay, now. but that doesn't have a story <laughs> through line, you know, outside of some of the 2000s games up until 06. <gasps> oh my god, he said Dark Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Our audience doesn't know who that is, Daniel. We didn't, we, we didn't, do, we didn't do Unleashed yet. How are they supposed to know? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Point is, there's not much story significance to Sonic that necessitates us playing all the games in their release order compared to the mainline Metroid games. Otherwise, otherwise we'd be playing this well after Fusion. So, I don't want to hear it. 
How come? Like, we're going to uh, play the 2D games and other M in order. But the Prime games are their own beast, because they're relatively separate from everything. Mm. As a spin-off series. Well, yeah, because all of them t take place, I guess, between 1 and 2. I guess. Apparently. There are Metroids still around, so I guess. They could hypothetically take place at any time. Well, no, I guess you're right, because there are no Metroids. Uh, later yeah. On. But, the last know, Metroid the, is in captivity. The, the Chozo, galaxy is at listen, peace. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. The Chozo created the Metroid. What if these Chozo made their own Metroid? I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever get it. I wonder if we'll ever get uh, original Metroids back at all. Uh, outside of like a prequel game or something. Because, yeah. Like, with They're Dread, gone. they've just wanted to fully wipe the floor with them and just be like we are done we are the fusion ended the experiments and dread has dealt with the dna inside of samus so i it really does make you wonder where are they gonna go will they even be called metroid games in the future who knows Ooh, that would be uh, probably because samus, samus is still a metroid Samus is still a Metroid. So that the, could actually still make sense. I, I I think that would work. It, it could still make sense. I agree. And Metroid in Chozo also just means, like, warrior. So uh, it would actually um, make sense. Actually, it's supposed to be uh, a reference to Metro being mobile and uh, Android. Ah, shit! For Samus's character uh, as a robotic-like character. So... Uh, yeah, you got the meaning wrong. Ugh. No, this is the retcon. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what it no, is. That's now. just how the it's... Japanese name was created. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yoshio Sakamoto was like, "Yeah, that's a robot." Did he come up with the title? I don't know. Yeah, he did. He okay. Did. Oh, okay. Um, that makes a lot of sense then. <laughs> Because he probably came in when he came into development, probably didn't even know what that this wasn't supposed to be a robot. <laughs> yeah. Then again, with their definition of the term bounty hunter, I wouldn't be surprised if Android could also mean a similar thing. Because like Master yeah. Chief's originally called an Android in Halo. Or no, actually, he's called a cyborg. Never mind. Cyborg, I think, makes more sense. Uh, Samus could be a cyborg. I don't know if she has any robotic enhancements. Or if the suit itself counts as a robotic enhancement. So she might be a cyborg. Uh, but not an android. Well, she, I think she just has genetic enhancements. And she has the suit. Um. Yeah, she's got that mocking DNA. And it's fucking badass as hell. And she's also got Metroid DNA. So she's even more badass now. Like... <laughs> They've, like, done a full weird character arc with her, where she, she fucking becomes a mother and kills her father. Isn't that fun? <laughs> and constantly yeah. kills a being called Mother Brain. So, like, is the Metroid series about patricide and inf infant side? I think so. I think that's the entire... Yoshio Sakamoto, is this what you wanted when you watched Evangelion for, like, the seventh time? Shit. Because I know he watched Evangelion when he made uh, Other M. I guarantee it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Even as someone who doesn't know anything about that series, I can tell there's some inspiration there. <laughs> Everybody watched Ava, unfortunately. I'm forgetting what I'm supposed to be doing in this puzzle. I, forgot uh, I did. I had way. to go back and forth and do this like ten times before I actually figured out uh -huh. what I was supposed to do. I did, by the way, forget to mention we got the wave beam earlier. I love the wave beam in this. It looks cool. <laughs> I think it technically has a worse fire rate, like than uh, the original GameCube version of the game, which is weird. Probably just to balance it a bit. Because, like, I think that that's definitely supposed to be an idea here. Is because your beams don't stack. They're supposed to have different properties, so you want to go between them. Yeah. Uh, 
which this game handles a lot better than Super Metroid does, in my opinion. Oh shit! But at the cost, but I think in the original game, for mo for the most part, nobody really uses the original power beam. Once they start getting other beams, so I think this was a uh, way to yeah. fix that. Because like at least when I was playing it, I constantly switched between this and the power beam and all other beams. Mm -hmm. I mainly just stick to uh, like whatever beam I happen to have to switch to for a door. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so and it's I, just I'm so just easy. Like... So I'm like, I might as well change them since it's just like switching out a standard weapon. I, do uh, I got a lot of views out of the ice beam. That one was a lot of fun when you combine with I, missiles. Yeah, I do love the uh, the plasma beam. It's just a very satisfying, like, uh, just powerful shot. You know. I never got that one. It's it's the fire one. Oh, that's the plasma beam. Yeah. I thought I thought it was called the flamethrower. No, the flamethrower is what you get when you combine it with missiles. Like, it, when you charge it, charge your beam up, and then hold the missile button to do a separate attack. I thought the base weapon was just called the flamethrower. Huh. No, it, it, it's the plasma beam, and then the flamethrower is the, the missile. Well, someone carry. didn't pay attention here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For some reason, it's not doing it, the thing it's supposed to be doing. Hmm. I guess I have to go this way. I love all the random synth noises. <laughs> the I have no idea what this theme. sound's supposed to be, but it's so good. The space pirate theme is uh, is pretty damn good in this game. Uh, this was still Kenji Yamamoto, right? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I think it's him, but like I also thought it was him for Dread, and apparently it wasn't. So let me find out. Yeah, so these bitches are basically your reason for switching beams in this game, <laughs> other than yeah. doors. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, they are color-coded for your convenience. <laughs> the yellow ones use the you same... See, I can never pan. tell, though, when it's color-coded, if I if it's supposed to be, uh, you know, I, I shoot them with the matching laser beam. Or if it's like Sonic Heroes and I have to use a different color, oh, like in no, the Metal it, Sonic fight, and that always messes with me. <laughs> it, it's always uh, the matching beam because the lore is the space pirates are trying to reverse engineer Samus's beam weapons, but they're doing it poorly. So whatever beam they're they're using at the current time, uh, they're impervious to all other beams other than that same beam for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> this is on Wikipedia, so I can't confirm it, but apparently to develop a lot of the music for Super Metroid, he would just come up with them while humming to himself uh, while riding, riding a motorcycle to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I would make music if I And you know, that for ability. a lot of the main melodies of a lot of the Super Metroid music, you know, that kind of makes sense. They're very hummable. Very, yeah. very catchy. Very catchy, yeah. With then a lot of extra stuff added afterwards. And I think that makes sense if that's how we got the core of it. Ooh. Square Enix sale on Steam. You should get Final <laughs> Fantasy 13. Shut the fire. We're in a commentary right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just got the notification. <laughs> oh, just a carbon date when this happened, I guess. Yeah. Whatever the closest uh, Steam sale to whenever this uploads is. We already we already <laughs> carbon dated this by saying that we don't know that there's a direct coming up, even though did the we, direct will have already. Did we happened. talk about the direct already? That was. Or was that before uh, we started the video? I don't know. No, that was the first thirty minutes of this video. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> but uh. It's a good thing these guys, the the race standard arm cannon guys, are also weak to the regular missiles. Oh, by the way, he did do the nice. music for uh, okay. this game and yeah. all of the prime games. Uh, also, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Mario Kart Super Circuit. Oh, sound support. And that's uh, uh, oh, 
This explains a lot. So for Metroid Fusion, he was also sound director. Mm -hmm. Which I guess, because I think, yeah, you can kind of hear it because that game's a lot more industrial. In a lot of its sound effects. Yeah. So I think that kind of makes sense. Well, but yeah, it was also a GBA title, so maybe that's also why well, that, they just doubled also, up on rules. It's, it's also more industrial because of the setting. Like, I'm sure that was very intentional. Uh, it being a space facility rather than a real environment. Um, Hard to say, because immediately after that on Zero Mission, he was uh, no longer... He was just music and no longer sound director, so I don't know. Mm. Uh, he also did music with Minako Hamano for uh, Super Fusion and Zero Mission. Red things. Uh, so I don't know... How much uh, influence came from Minako? Mm -hmm. We just got our 50% scan log. Let's go, fellas. Yay. This, uh, there's a lot of scanning to be done in this area because you get the, the all the different... Uh, well, not all of them yet, but the different space pirates. You get the Metroids. Uh, lots of pirate, uh, space pirate logs. Um. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Broke you my cover. Fucked. I hate these turrets. They're satisfying to destroy, but whenever they appear, I'm like, oh, come on. I don't want to deal with this. A good combo for a ton of damage is a charge shot followed by a missile because they do about the same amount of damage. Um, but it's like a really high amount of damage. So, and most of the things in this game can be two shot like that. Um, of course you can minimize the time on that as soon as you get super missiles, but it huh. spends more missiles, so. Well, shit. Okay, so, uh, Minako Hamano, been looking her, her up, uh, her first two games she debuted on were Link's Awakening and Super Metroid as a composer. Uh, she wrote both The Ballad of the Windfish and Ridley's theme. Oh. Wow. Ballad yeah. of the Windfish hits home because I fucking love Link's Awakening. Yeah, now imagine <laughs> that and Ridley's theme. <laughs> they fit together so well. Yeah, of course. <laughs> they should be in the playlist mixed together. Well, they're like two of two of the most iconic songs from each of their f respective series actually so damn yeah they are good at what they do <laughs> shit i did this for sonic apparently i gotta do this for metroid now <laughs> <laughs> time to research intensely all the staff of metroid games yeah fortunately there's much less metroid games than sonic games yeah <laughs> but well you say that but like almost every t every game is made by a different team yeah but that's eh, fine so are sonic games though like a lot of sonic games are made by a lot of different yeah people. but there's a lot of similar staff at various points Going from, like, the Genesis games, they have a pretty consistent staff. Usually, not really often losing members, but more gaining more members. And then you get the 2000s, where they have a consistent staff between SA1 and 2. Then for Hero Shadow, between Hero Shadow, 06, and Secret Rings, you have a lot of people being moved around, a lot of people coming in. And then after that, you slowly start seeing the teams combine, and then lose more members into our current teams. If that makes sense. <laughs> I, I gotcha. <laughs> I really like this uh, this puzzle solving theme. I don't know what it's called. Very nice. But it's very funky. Funky little beat. This uh, kind of reminds, reminds me of a track that'd be in uh, Final Fantasy VII. Uh, to anyone who knows like the track, uh, I think it's Under the Rotting Pizza comes to mind immediately uh that track name makes sense in the game uh yeah 
<laughs> oh my god. Okay, to explain it, the city of Midgar in the starting section of the game is kind of laid out like a giant ass pizza. You got eight slices for the eight sectors. Yeah. And someone refer and one of the characters refers to it at a, as a giant rotting pizza because it's killing the planet. And then the track itself is called under the rotting pizza. And it makes sense. <laughs> This is uh this is where we where we learn that uh uh planet Zebus and Talon 4 are in the same solar system. Which Oh. Yeah. Really? Is yeah. uh SR388 in here too or no? Uh I don't think so. It'd be very very retroactive, but like they could unless, have a ZDR there and that would have also been neat. Unless I missed the uh scan, I think. But I don't Pretty know neat. if it's actually still I like here. That. It kind of makes the Metroid universe feel a little smaller, though, if that makes sense. No, but it kind of gives context for how far the Chozo traveled, you know? Cause, yeah. Because, and, and even now, currently, you just don't really have any context for, like, where all did they make it to, what all did they accomplish. Mm -hmm. You don't really know, because you don't know where any of the planets are. You just know you're on a different planet. Or, like, are they in the same solar system? Are they in the same galaxy, even? You don't know. Yeah, you're right. Also, super missiles! Let's go! These, these things are fucking awesome. These things uh, are satisfying as hell to use. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Little things. Little, a few things. We thought the missiles were satisfying. Nah, the super missiles in this game are freaking way more satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny, between this and Fusion, both games have charging missiles. This game does it better than Fusion, for sure. <laughs> like, I like yeah. the idea of the, the Fusion missiles from uh, Fusion with the ice, but like, yeah. this is cooler, because these do more damage. But ice, it's ice is cooler. <laughs> I used it for puzzle solving, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really use the ice missiles at all, so... I use the ice missiles, but not the charge shot. Like, I can see how it'd be useful shot? for... No, the charge shot for the missiles. Oh, that does a, like, big swirly thing? Yeah, I see how it'd be useful in combat. I just didn't really use it much outside yeah. of puzzles. It's kind of like the, uh... The, but the missiles bomb. themselves, at least against, like, the SAX and a couple bosses, are pretty nice. It's kind of like the power bomb uh, button combination things from Super... Yeah. It is hurt though that super missiles are not a separate item, and that the, but once you get the plasma beam, that mm. with the charge shot is just so absurd. Yeah. Ah. Uh, when we get into fusion. <laughs> um. Well, we gotta do Metroid Two and Super, but before <sighs> we do that, and both of those are mine now. So. <laughs> yeah. Have fun with that. Yeah. Uh, do I feel bad uh, abandoning it and leaving it to you? No. Hey, you know, from the little bit that I was playing, I didn't mind Metroid 2. I was having fun. Well, there you go. I didn't mind Metroid 1 as much when I got into it. So let's go. <laughs> oh, we're both happy. Yeah. Are we, though? Because you're always like, you get super and dread. <laughs> because I like to make fun of you. <laughs> I have fusion, that's all I care about. I'm just making sure, man. I fucking love fusion. Alright, so here the, there is a trick to get the Chozo artifact early. Uh, I failed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you should have just kept the, trying and then did a jump cut. Because there's a gap in, the, in, in this, like, hologram wall. Uh... It's like in between the hologram walls. There's a small gap. And you have to jump at that gap and aim a missile through it. At that orange thing there. And uh -huh. I didn't know about the gap. I thought I had to get over the thing. Uh, how long are you uh, going to be attempting this for? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't think I get it in this part though. See, look, I'm like, ah, I discovered I can shoot between the lines. Miss. 
I can hear the stupid noise that there's a thing. I want it. <laughs> you can't get that silver medal yet. Mm -hmm. It has been zero days since we mass mm -hmm. last mentioned the blue fucker. <laughs> and it'll stay at zero forever. <laughs> oh, no, I can't see it on that. Just go. No, well, you can say that all you want. I am not going to be going because this is the past <laughs> and this is the pre and we are in the present unfortunately. Well, you know, apparently I got a steam cell to go look at. I could be doing that right now. Listen, I just All shook right, there the we go. We're good. I I shook the camera left and right saying that I give up. So, that's how you know. I think I try again when I come back up though because I have to go back up this way. <laughs> As punishment in the next Doom video, I shall leave in all deaths. Do it, then. Make our guest star suffer. <laughs> That'd be a uh, so almost three-hour video for some of those levels. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> I believe it. Fuck it, Holy I still got crap, the recordings. Metroid. I could probably do it. I'm oh, they look so it. good in this. I was about to be like, I'm going to say it. They look so good in this remake. <laughs> <laughs> I beat you to it. <laughs> Dude, they have like the bigger back fangs. Oh, they look so neat. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, and I, love I this forget sound how to too. fight you. It's so nice being able to hear that sound at high quality. Because my first, my, my first experience with anything Metroid, including Prime, of course was from the Prime Hunters demo on DS. Which they mm -hmm. do have the Metroids on and the sound effect for them. Yeah. And it's nice being able to actually hear it in a good sound quality. Uh, I still have a lot of nostalgia for that version of the Metroid Prime theme, though. Yeah. Uh, so, credit where credit's due. Uh... This is like the infamous area, I think, for missing scan logs. <laughs> yeah, like, I swear, every so fucking much. screen, there's something, and you probably miss something, no matter how many you, times you, you just, come through. Every time you go through an area, you just gotta run back through it with your scan visor open, looking for all the red, red squares. Like, this is some bullshit nearing the level of Final Fantasy X-2, which has like one of the most god awful 100% I've ever seen. I really I wouldn't mind 100%ing this game as much if uh, the scan log just didn't count towards it, you know? You could ignore it, but then like it's there, taunting you, being like you didn't get 100%. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying though, is like I wish getting 100% didn't involve the scanning. Like I wish the scanning was still there, obviously, but Mm -hmm. I wish it was 100% optional rather than being necessary for completion's sake. Shoot a missile. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. We've you gotten, got another hit. <laughs> we've gotten several of those this part. Probably because this part is way too fucking long. <laughs> yeah. Whose fault was that? Not mine this time. Yay. I'm usually the one with the longer parts, anyways, so... I guess, but, like, I don't... I, feel I make like we fun of you it. for I, editing out I feel like we memed it more for me. I, I I made fun of you for editing out too much. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, And I don't edit out enough. <laughs> I'll ah, try shit. it. I... That's some bullshit. Fuck that. I would hate that. Yeah, you, the camera angle here is very funky and... Obviously, the physics of the ball are very realistic. Okay. Uh, For all developers out there making a 3D platformer, if you make a section that's hard to control and make the camera move and change how I move the character, I hate you. You're not good. <laughs> Don't do this. Uh, Unleashed did the same thing, and it was awful. <laughs> hate is a strong word. You're right, loaves. Because <laughs> I still love the thesaurus. developers that made this game. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, Yay! I cut out a, Yay, I cut, finally! 
<laughs> I cut out a lot of meandering there because I was like, you know, before I progress, I'm going to go try and get that Chozo artifact again. And then I gave <laughs> up again. <laughs> I thought you were going back for the rest of the scans. <laughs> oh, no. No, I, it was much, much, much less useful. Of course. Dude, I love when they fucking ragdoll and just fly through the air. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's so satisfying. They made this game... More so games cool. need ragdoll engines. <laughs> yeah. Especially these guys, because they, like, <laughs> rocket down toward the ground. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I know a lot of people will say that, like, that uh, ragdolls take away from the realism and immersion. But, like, okay, in a game like Dark Souls, that game is dark and depressing enough. I need the ragdolls to laugh at every now and then. Like, come on, yeah. I need them. They help. They help so much. They're so funny in that game. Yeah. It and is, you got Halo, I was, which is like the king of ragdolls. <laughs> I was kind of upset when I went to go play uh, Elden Ring and the bodies just kind of fade into dust, you know? Yeah, it's not the same. That's what you play Dark Souls for. That's why I, I wanted to play soccer with someone's corpse for a while. <laughs> just play Dark Souls 1. We're about to get another fucking item. This section of the game, you get a lot, like, in the in a short span. Yeah, this is, I like this section a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And then the game becomes more esoteric, and it's hard to figure out where to go, and you don't get many items for a while. And uh, that's where I got lost. <laughs> uh, Fu Super does the same thing, and, like, once you hit get to Meridia... And I, the same thing kind of happens there, but I'm usually it's usually a lot easier for me to go back to Super Metroid to finish it than this. Yeah. But that usually usually in Super Metroid at the Meridia point is when I kind of clock out mentally and just be like, maybe I'll finish the save file, maybe I won't. Yeah. Can I just say I think Metroid Prime has the best uh, item get. Like, the best version of the item get theme in the series. Like, it's they, so that good. Or Fusion. I love the one in this, but the one in Fusion... Uh... Like... Okay, because, I, I, because I've already brought it up a bit. I love the sound design in Fusion. And for me, that's kind of what hits the best. Uh, also, Dread. But everything in Dread is so fucking bass boosted and satisfying. It's just hard not to love. Yeah, I agree for those. I just love this version because they got, like, the whole, like, chorus coming in. Yeah. In the background of the theme. It's just, it's, like, magic to my ears when I hear it. Mm-hmm. Wrong we... beam. <laughs> um, this is, uh, I, I right here, the, one... the, the thermal Sorry. visor is, uh, kind of one of the small, like, because the... the 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 hardcore Metroid Prime fans they do exist, of course. Every everything has their hardcore fans. This is one of the the small nitpicks they have with this because obviously they love this remaster still. But like the thermal visor and stuff like the item switching, uh, aren't as good obviously as the original. And so, a, this isn't necessarily the perfect metroid prime experience because of that because the effect on the thermal visor here is very strong it's way stronger than the original makes yeah, things very I hard yeah i hate to looking see. through this thing yeah it's very hard to fucking see you basically are just looking for white glowing blobs <laughs> like but mm -hmm. yeah like the, they the the hardcore Metroid Prime fans are, will say it's not necessarily the perfect way to play, but this is still by far the best way to play Prime now. Like, this is one of the few times Nintendo does a remaster, and it's actually, like, better than all the previous releases of it. What about so, uh, Link's Awakening? Uh, Link's Awakening uh, does have... I know a frame rate aside, at least. Uh, performance yeah. issues aside. The... I, I've watched some videos on it, and I couldn't tell you the exact reasons why, but I do remember there being some people that are like, yeah, this has a lot of problems compared to the original. I think they added, like, a ton more of the, like, seashell collectibles 
and made it necessary for you to collect way more of them to get the power-ups. Mm. And they added, like, a lot of stuff like that that kind of bogs down the pace of the game, despite having, like, the better item, like, switching and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So, That's kind of like, a make-or-break thing for me with a lot of Zelda games is how required I am to get a lot of extra items and how easy or mm -hmm. obtuse some of them are for me because I am not good at puzzles at all. I know this is just a me problem. Yeah. But it does hurt m impact me playing a lot of Zelda games. Yeah. I, I understand that because I've struggled to play a lot of Zelda games. I think for my money though I think uh, Link's Awakening the Link's Awakening remake is still a great way to play and I think a lot of Zelda fans would still agree with that because mm -hmm. um, well at like, least I have it, the original so I have access yeah. to that it does have so many quality of life things like the scrolling like naturally scrolling between the screens rather than having to walk 10 feet very slowly and then have the the screen shift every 10 seconds you know, that's very nice having more item slots so you don't have to constantly pause the game to switch things out you know li like tons of stuff like that um, so I think it's still a great way to play the game uh, and obviously like the the stuff for 100% completion you obviously don't have to get 100% completion mm -hmm. so that doesn't really bog down my playthrough because I'm not getting 100% yeah, um, to be fair, this does is something that impacts me for both Zelda and Metroid, but at least for Metroid, the general gameplay loop for me is so much more satisfying. I yeah. absolutely I love running through a 2D Metroid world more a lot more than any Zelda world. And the general gameplay and how much of a badass mm -hmm. I feel is much higher in Metroid. Uh Yeah. I I I completely agree there. I think uh, the quality of a Zelda game mostly hinges on how good the items you get are, because obviously yeah. you're you're not negotiating any platforming like you are in Metroid, uh, which is like just always a natural part of the gameplay that you're always playing. Um, but yeah, like it, I think Link's Awakening is actually better for that because don't you do you it. Get, don't you do it. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I have more practice now. Oh, my goodness. But you already told me you failed. I failed earlier, but do I fail now? I, I'm going to go with yes. Because <laughs> um, if I get this now, I never have to come back here. Wait, never mind. There's an ice door somewhere yeah. around here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. oh. I hit it. Well, I, I, I almost hit it. I can uh, do this. I can do this. God damn it. <laughs> Gotta hit it with a missile. That was my problem. Flashbacks to the Outlast speedrun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, at least that was a 14 minute long video or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I wanted to get some kind of sequence break in here. You know, it's a Metroid game. I don't think I've ever really done any sequence breaking for a Metroid game. Look uh, at other that. Other than getting the occasional item early. Like in uh, Dread or Fusion. Before, like, I get... Say, I use, like, the uh, wall jump before I get the Shine Spark or something. Yeah, that's like it. Well, this there a couple points in different. Free Fusion where you can do that, but it's ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we that's got a nice artifact. theme. That's a yeah, cool theme. The artifact pickup theme. Um, I Very love nice. anything that has like synthy stuff going on with a chorus. <laughs> <laughs> that that's just just so good sounding to me. Can I go up in here? Yeah. Ooh, then you're gonna love some more Doom music good that's that's what i want to hear actually this isn't related to doom but i'll send it to you it's kind of related i'll send it to you later but it's uh have you heard any of the music from uh near automata no not a single beep 
Uh, a lot of it features heavy vocals, and there's this guy on YouTube who would do Doom covers, where he would try to take songs and remake them in the Doom Eternal style. So with heavy use of low street of low, of uh, low tuned guitars and uh, synths and industrial noises, mm -hmm. and he did one with a song from Near because of how vocal heavy it is. He kind of combined it with some electronic vocals for it, and it's a very neat, neat sound. I'll have to send it to Ooh. you. Uh, specifically cool. for the song, uh... Fuck, why can't I remember the song name? Uh, it's just called A Beautiful Song, that's what it is. Uh, I'm a fake Nier fan, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll send it to you after this. It's, I think you'd like it. Even though you haven't played any enough Doom or Nier, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just two of my favorite bad. franchises of all time. <laughs> But it's okay. You haven't beat Half Life 2. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. When I beat Half Life 2, you gotta play near. <laughs> I don't think that's a fair trade, but sure, I'll do it. How many hours have you put into Half Life? <laughs> I have put not as many as you'd think, because like probably that's... enough to be worth at least one thirty-hour playthrough of Near Automata. Yeah, that is true. That is... It is pretty short for a JRPG, thankfully. But you're not going to put that much time into Half-Life. Across all my playthroughs, I might have. Um, attempted playthroughs, actually. <laughs> Fuck this guy. <laughs> well, here he comes. Bitch. <laughs> they think I can't see them. They're hilarious. I can't see her, so she can't see me. They're playing peekaboo. My name is Michael J. Caboose. <laughs> <laughs> Tucker did it. <laughs> Man, I miss oh. Red vs. Blue, goddamn. I miss it so much. Oh, that reminds me. It used to be uh, so great. <laughs> that reminds me. So the news kind of came out today. Because that's a Half-Life, uh, or not Half-Life, a Halo thing. Yeah. Uh, the news kind of came out today that uh, Microsoft is going third party with the Xbox games. Oh, yeah. Halo uh, might finally be on uh, PlayStation. Yeah. They're, they're going the way of the Sega. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. They're still making consoles, so I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, actually. <laughs> Are they still going to uh, make consoles? It just put out the Series X. I don't think it bombed. It didn't sell nearly as well as the PS5. The PS5's basically got a Did the 360 monopoly. sell as well as the PS3, though? The 360 was way closer. Fair enough. The 360 almost won that generation, but the PS3, like, came back at, like, the last minute, pretty much. Because uh, late-game PS3 games are so goddamn good-looking. <laughs> Well, late game PS, like late game Sony, got off their ass because they were like, "Oh, we're untouchable at the start of the PS3's life," but then the 360 did way mm -hmm. better because the the PS3 was seven hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> was it actually? It was like, it was either six hundred or seven hundred. It was Jesus insane. Christ! For yeah. a Blu-ray player, that's a bit much. <laughs> yeah, it was because they had made their whole own custom. Uh, uh, firmware and and whatnot, and that made it really hard to develop on. But the 360 was just a PC, and it was much cheaper, so everyone bought a fucking 360. <laughs> you know what's funny though is that part of that low price point was the rendering of that. <laughs> but yeah, hey, it worked out for them, I guess. Yeah, they Sony at least has the ability to get off their ass when they are complacent and losing. I don't know if Microsoft has that ability as well. Like, they made the Series it X It's hard that's awesome. to tell, because game-wise, no. Not really. No, yeah, their games, no. Their game quality, like, as a Microsoft fanboy, their game quality has just slowly fallen behind Sony really poorly. Yeah. Um, outside of a, an occasional game here and there. But then, like, you got decisions like their backwards compatibility library and Game Pass, and it's like, are they really falling behind as much as you would think? 
in other ways. They're just kind of making up for it in different ways, you know? Uh, yeah. Why isn't this working? What the hell? I don't know. This is what I'm supposed to do. I, I don't know. Huh. I genuinely don't know why this was giving me so much trouble. Hmm. Oh, that's why. Okay. Oh. I needed to super, super missile. missile that bitch. Okay. See, I got the wave beam. I was looking for places to use the wave beam. <laughs> um, what were we talking about? Something about Microsoft? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that's... their game, their games just simply put, other than, like, the, a couple games here and there, like Hi-Fi Rush and stuff, which are really creative and fun. Ori. Ori as well. Uh, well games that don't... aren't made directly by them. <laughs> yeah. It, they, it, it just doesn't compare to like Sony's catalog, and even now Sony's catalog is just like, oh, we're gonna have really cinematic games rather than yeah. games with lots of in-depth gameplay, and I'm kind of getting tired of that personally. Um, well, like with the recent announcements of like the next Team Ninja game, Stellar Blade, like. I almost want to switch over to PlayStation now. I'm like, damn, they've almost <laughs> won me over. Like, Final Fantasy 16, 7 Remake uh, Part 2, like, well earlier than PC. Like, fuck, I kind of want these. Silent Hill 2 and shit. Yeah, there's definitely uh, a few games now. But the PS5 has been, like, floundering so hard when it comes to exclusives because Sony just keeps putting everything on PC, which is, you know, a good thing. But as someone that bought a PlayStation 5, I have nothing to <laughs> yeah. play other than the Demon Souls remake, and for now, Spider-Man 2. <laughs> yeah, that is at least one field Nintendo will always hold the king of, is their exclusives are just always so worth it to get the console for. Mm -hmm. And at least with the Switch, they've gotten just such a very nice hold, I think, on a lot of mobile games. Or not mobile games, but indie games. Yeah. And 2D games. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like a stroke of marketing genius or just some weird psychology thing, but there is something that feels right about playing a 2D indie game or pixel mm. art game on a Switch. And yeah. I don't know why Switch specifically, but because, it just feels right. Because for the, those games on the Switch, there's no there's no sort of downgrade. There's no trade-off. You get the game and you can play it on a TV or in handheld, and it's yeah. just the same experience as playing it on any other console, but you get the handheld option. Yeah, because, like, uh, uh, Blaster Master Zero, I have it on both PC and uh, Switch, as well as, like, Gunvolt. And, yeah. like, on PC, I always struggle to get into it for some reason. I would play it for a bit and never come back, and then as soon as I get on Switch, I don't know why, it just clicked, and I was like, oh, I can play for all of this now. I didn't even play it in handheld mode. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't get it. You know, There's it's something also... in my mind when it's a pixel art game and I start playing it on Switch, it just clicks and it's like, yeah. oh yeah, this just feels right. I don't know. There's also there's also just a massive uh, indie boom on the Switch because the Switch dev kits are so cheap. Mm -hmm. Like a PlayStation or Xbox dev kit, those can be thousands of dollars. The Switch dev kit is only five hundred, which is mm -hmm. like. As much as a PlayStation 5 is, like a standard P PlayStation 5. So, you know, it's it's really good for indie devs. Like, I think Nintendo just kind of nailed the Switch. Like, I don't give a fuck that it's an old, like, it's old hardware. It's, like, getting outdated at this point. It's a good-ass system, I think, and I'll stand by that for, for the rest of fucking time. <laughs> yeah i still see a lot of people argue oh it's bad because it's not powerful and it's like it doesn't need to be yeah it's just there's just so many other features it has that are so unique to it yeah um, i'm not even a nintendo fanboy so like this should mean a lot when you hear it from me <laughs> yeah like i think i i definitely uh I, I wouldn't consider myself a nintendo fanboy but i think nintendo just from an objective standpoint, is probably just one of the best uh, game developers, purely because they do have some scummy practices when it comes to old games. Like, they don't re-release all the old games, and when they do, they're really expensive, and they also come down on emulators and stuff. Like, that's the mm -hmm. worst part of Nintendo. But other than that, they're like, yeah, if we're making a game, it's going to be good. 
if we're making a console, it's going to be good. Other than arguably the Wii U. That was Nintendo floundering because they were, I guess, suffering from success with the Wii. <laughs> and they were like, let's just make another Wii. But, <laughs> uh, you know, like, I think Nintendo, at, at the very least, they don't necessarily need competition because they themselves will push themselves to evolve the gaming medium in mm-hmm. whatever way. And I like that a lot about Nintendo. Other other game companies just don't do that. I would like to point out that this is the longest Metroid part we've done and it's also the longest we've done over the part. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> um, well, you know, this For is the what poor happens. viewers, I think we should probably end here soon. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, well, it's it's all going to be it's we're either going to be proven right about Nintendo or wrong about Nintendo depending on this direct that probably already happened. So maybe this is a very dated part already. But uh, yeah, whatever. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, well. I guess the viewer knows. <laughs> <laughs>